guys, welcome to a weekend reading vlog. So to kick off this little weekend reading vlog, I will be unboxing the August Shelf Love Crate because Shelf Love Crate have kindly sponsored this video. This is the August box. The theme of this was Take Flight and it has some very exciting items in it. I believe there is a Nevernight inspired item in here that I am just itching to get my hands on. And I'm also very excited about the book that is in here. If you don't know, Shelf Love Crate are one of the few subscription boxes that announce ahead of time what book is going to be in their box. And I'm very excited about the book in this this box it was on my Amazon wish list. I took it off when I found out it was going to be in this box and the reason that I am so excited about it is that the wonderful Madison Mary from Princess of Paperback read it maybe a month or two ago and it's one of her favourite books of the year. She got an ARC at BookCon. She has been raving about it and I'm just desperate to read it. If you would like to get your hands on your very own shelf of crates then I have a code for you guys. My code is Becca10 and if you enter that code at checkout you will get a 10% discount off your first purchase. So let's crack this open i am um, excited i've been doing the um opening on the shoulder technique i haven't mastered it yet especially ugh, on my right side but we'll see how we go are we ready are we ready are we ready for the noise Ooh. if you've been watching any of my unboxings you will know that i have made that my signature unboxing sound so august shelf love crate the first thing we have is the little spoiler booklet this always has some art relating to the book on it and this art is also on a bookmark that you get with the book on the back as well we have the september theme which is the witching hour as you can see it is very spooky and the september crate will be for fans of sabrina the grishaverse a discovery of witches a throne of glass and practical magic i do also follow shelf love crate on their social media and i know that the october theme is from page to screen as well and that one looks super exciting you guys don't know my book collection actually started in charity shops and it was because like i've always read but i started collecting books because i was a film study student and i was really into film at the time so when i was reading i was picking up a lot of adaptations so page to screen sounds exciting as usual we'll just um stick our hand in and see what we've got so the first item is a pin oh this is pretty okay let me take it out of the plastic i don't know what it is about shelf love crate but every time i get a shelf love crate they have items in that are related to a book that i've just read the most notable one being the first unboxing that i did and i unboxed the box directly after finishing illuminate and some of the items were illuminate inspired and this time we have a ketadam pin and as you guys will know if you've seen my wrap up the last book that i finished in august was in fact six of crows if you've been following these vlogs and also my unboxings you will also so know that I love a pin. They're my favourite items to get in subscription boxes. So next we have, just get all of the packing fluff out of it, a paper, a paper, a fabric item. Ooh, this is cool. Okay, so this is like a drawstring bag and the design on it is the old post from harry potter obviously i love this i love art like this it's like kind of old-fashioned and this is just it's super cute to have in a bag so i like this another fabric item what is this this is exciting i also really like fabric items i like most things that come in subscription boxes in case you haven't noticed so this feels like it's a book sleeve which is exciting so this says you can keep the glory i'm just here for the blood and this is a nevernight inspired book sleeve so this is the nevernight item that i have been dying to know what it is for so long because once again related to a book i've just finished i have just finished rereading nevernight and god's grave i will be picking up dark dawn next week and yeah hopefully it will fit in my book sleeve i also just really love book sleeves because not only are they decorative they're useful so next we have a bookmark and i had to check the spoiler card for this one it's a very very pretty design and this is inspired by the raven cycle which i have not read yet but i like the kind of copper foiling design on this and then is this yeah Last item before we get to the kind of extras, we have a, just throw it all on the floor. So we have a, don't look at my face. Look at Maleficent, she pretty, she's right here. We have a Maleficent themed keyring. And then the last 
items before we get to the book. If you don't know, Shelf of Crate have added bonus items to all of their 2019 boxes. I do actually have one already prepared before we get to this month. This has been on my bedside table since last time. But they're making chess pieces for characters. And then if you have all of the Shelf of Crate boxes, that is the monthly ones and the special edition ones, then you'll end up with a full chess set that you can play with. Oh my god. I just saw who the characters were for this month. <laughs> my babies. So first up, let me just assemble them. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Thank you so much Shelf Love Crate for blessing me with these. Okay, so the chess pieces for August are Rowan and Reese, Rowan from Throne of Glass and Reese of course from the Akatar series. You guys all know how much trash I am for Sarah J Maas. Not gonna lie, Rowan is not my favourite male character in Throne of Glass. I really like Lorcan. Reese is my um my OG book boy so I'm very very happy. And now for the book. So as I said earlier you always get a bookmark with the same art as the spoiler card and it's related to the book in some way. It usually has the main character. And the book for August is The Merciful Crow by Margaret Owen. This does also have a book plate that comes with it which I will stick in when I'm done with this video. I don't know too much about this. I just know that it's a young adult fantasy but as I said Madison from Princess of Paperback really loved this book so I was excited to read it and oh I don't know if you can see that because it's really subtle but on the naked hardcover it's like right there we go we have like a little imprint of a crow oh it's really pretty naked actually okay so as usual with subscription box books I will read you the synopsis from here oh the map is on the end pages I like that a future chieftain a fugitive prince a too cunning bodyguard and one grumpy gray tabby Fi abides by one rule look after your own as the future chieftain of a shunned cast of mercy killers she relies on her wits and bow magic drawn from the teeth of dead witches to protect her band the crows take more abuse than coins so when they're called to collect the royal dead Fi hopes they'll find the payout of a lifetime when Fi discovers that crown prince Jasmine and his crafty bodyguard Tavin have faked their deaths to escape the ruthless Queen Rosanna. She's ready to cut her losses and perhaps their throats. But Jazz offers a deal that she can't refuse. Make sure he lives to see the throne and he'll protect the crows when he reigns. To outrun and outwit the Queen, the trio forge an uneasy alliance that is soon tested by old secrets, shifting allegiances and forbidden feelings. As Rosanna and her band of deadly trekkers loom ever closer, the three fugitives must discover what they're each willing to sacrifice to save their own. If you guys are familiar with these weekend reading vlogs, you will know that I will be reading this this weekend so you will get my full thoughts on the merciful crow an anticipated book for me one that i have been looking forward to sounds interesting i like the idea of cast oh we also have there is a legend of the cast system in here which i imagine will be helpful and look at those like section dividers so that is pretty much all i have for you right now i will be checking in later tonight or tomorrow to let you know a little bit more about this when I have read some of it. Aside from that this weekend I don't have too many plans. I don't have a lot on at all really although on Sunday I do plan on going to the gym in the morning and then I'm meeting up with a friend from uni for lunch so I may take you guys along with me but that is pretty much all of my plans. I do have a live show actually Sunday evening. It's the Sobathon group book live show but yeah those are all my plans for the weekend so I'm gonna go tidy up all of this rubbish that I've just tossed on the bed and I will check in with you when I know a little bit more about what this is about. And I'm having a celebration, clearly, because it's actually been a year since I first posted my first ever Wheel of TBR video back last September, so... This made no sound. <laughs> there we go.
Hey guys, so I am running out of daylight, but I'm gonna try and give you a little bit of an update. It looks like I have a lot of daylight here, but it is 7 p.m. and it's like all twilighty outside. So I have, of course, been reading The Merciful Crow, let me shuffle, I never sit in the right place. I've been reading The Merciful Crow by Margaret Owen, and I'm actually really loving this book. So I'm on page 184. I'm on chapter 12 of this, I have around 200 pages left. Fingers crossed I'll be able to get this done tomorrow. We have quite a complex world in here. All of the citizens of the country, the country is called Sabor, are split into bird castes with Phoenix being the highest and the crows being the lowest. Now our main character is a crow and every single one of the casts aside from the crows have a birthright and the birthright is a kind of magic that they are able to use. So the phoenix's birthright is fire and they can conjure fire. However, not everybody is able to wield this magic. There are witches in every cast but there is only a certain number. It has something to do with gods. There were a thousand gods across all of the casts and then when all of the the gods died they kind of imbued their human descendants with the ability of magic so for example in I think it's the swan cast there were only three gods so there are only three people alive at any one time who are able to use swan magic. Now the crows don't have a birthright the job of the crows is to bury people who have died of the plague. The plague is called the sinner's plague and for some reason crows can't catch the plague therefore it is their job to deal with the bodies and remove them from the towns and the villages and burn them so that the whole town isn't infected. People really look down on crows in this world. They are the lowest of the low. They are below peasants. And there are rumors going around that the crows actually spread the plague, even though that isn't true. It's just kind of, they don't have a birthright, but for some reason they are immune to the plague. The mythology of this world is that the people who are born into the crow cast are people who have died of the sinner's plague themselves and have been reborn. And that is why they are immune and why they are assigned the duty of cleaning up after other people with the plague. Like any other cast, there are witches amongst the crows and the witches are able to use magic of any cast via teeth. So when somebody dies of the plague, somebody close to them or somebody from their village is required to give something called a viatic, which is essentially a price for the cleanup and removal of the body. And the crows will often claim this in teeth. So if a crow has the teeth of somebody from a different cast, they can use that tooth to use the ability of the cast. So this story starts out with our main character, Fi, who is a crow. She is a witch of the crows and she is training under her father to eventually become a chieftain of the crows. One day they are called to the palace of the rulers of Sabor and the reason for that is that there are two people in the palace who have contracted the plague. This hasn't happened, I think it's 500 years it says in the book, since the crows have been called to the palace but they arrive because it's their job to take away the bodies of these two boys who have died. While they're there, they meet the queen who married into the phoenix cast and the ruling family from the swan cast and she pays the viatic for the two dead boys and they cart away the bodies down the road the crows are always fearing for their safety so they're wondering if they've been followed by hawks which are like the soldiers of the country or vultures who are like the hunters now fire quickly finds out that the two boys that have died are the crown prince and his body double and they haven't actually died the crown prince believes that the queen is out to kill him because she wants to be the queen and then obviously his body double who is the person who's sworn to die for the prince because it's his job in any assassination attempts to assume the identity of the prince he's kind of along for the ride the current leader of the crows like knew all about this and knew what was going on but they strike up a bargain that they are going to hide the prince and his bodyguard amongst the crows and take them to a city where the prince will have allies where the prince will then hopefully be able to muster an army that will stand behind him against the queen so that they can get rid of the queen and reclaim the kingdom. So that is kind of the plot of this. I am enjoying it so far. This is quite a dense young adult fantasy in that it has a complex magic system, a complex political system, and then we also have some language in here that is particular to this world and this kingdom, like you do in quite a few fantasy books, but it's just terminology that you kind of have to get to grips with as you go along. Our main character, Fi, is angry. She's from a very downtrodden cast. They have a very low place in society. People spit at them. Everybody in the world is allowed to carry a blade. Apart from crows, they are 
only allowed to carry a broken blade and only the chieftain is allowed to carry this blade so that they can perform mercy killing so if somebody is dying of the plague they are allowed to kill them because there is no recovering from the plague but for some reason just because they are crows they are not allowed to carry blades and there's people just take advantage of them there's something called the oleander gentry which is a band of i'm not sure what you would call them i suppose you could kind of compare them to the kkk where they are a band of people who believe they are ridding the world of scum and what they do is at night time all of these people from whatever cast they're from band together paint their faces white and hunt down the crows to kill them so Fai is naturally very angry about everything she has has a quick temper. Strangely enough, she's not one of the characters that annoys me. Like, characters like this do tend to annoy me, where they are just so angry that they're not reasonable. But I actually kind of like Fi. She's feisty. She's angry because she's oppressed and she doesn't take any shit. Our other two main characters are Jasmine or Jazz, which is the crown prince, and Tavin, which is his bodyguard. Jasmine is a phoenix because he is the prince and the phoenixes are the royalty of the world. And Tavin is a hawk, so like, the soldier class. Now Tavin is the typical YA fantasy character or the YA fantasy love interest. I think he's going to be a love interest where he's very sarcastic. He's very charming. He's a little like Nikolai from the Grisha series and a little bit like Jace Wayland. So he's like charming and cocky and sure of himself. And then you have Jazz who he's very quiet and I haven't heard like a whole bunch from him this entire book. He said quite a few things to rub fire the wrong way so far in this book because he essentially does not recognize his own privilege. He'll say something that he doesn't consider offensive or he'll ask a question just out of curiosity but it's just not something that you ask people. For example there's one part in the book where something terrible has just happened and obviously the crows are treated horribly in this world so Jazz asks Fi like why don't the crows just leave the country because nobody wants them there. Why don't they just leave and find a better life elsewhere? Fi says, well, it's my home and I don't want to leave. I shouldn't have to leave. I haven't done anything wrong. And in that position, she felt that Jazz should have actually said like, look, I'm going to be the king. What can I do to make your life better? What can I do to improve the conditions that crows live in? But instead he said, why don't you just leave? So he does things like that. He's um, been sheltered to an extent because of his very privileged lifestyle. So that's pretty much what this book is about. I said that Madison from Princess of Paperback really loved this book but everybody else I've seen who's reading it like I'm pretty sure I saw somebody DNF it recently and a lot of people just haven't really been into this but I actually I'm really enjoying it. I think this is going to be at least a four star read. Now Margaret Owen is a debut author and with I'm going to say 95% of books from debut authors. You do have a few things that would not be present if it was a more experienced author. And I never like mark books down on things like that because it is expected and you have to give authors room to grow and recognize that like this is their first book. This is great for a first book. There are just a couple of places where I've kind of had to go back and read the page again to try and figure out what's happening because I feel like the transition between scenes or paragraphs is not as smooth. But that is like literally a very very minor complaint. Aside from that, I am very much enjoying the story. I'm excited to see where it's going because this story starts out where they're trying to get the prince and his bodyguard to their allies. But as you can imagine, something goes horribly wrong and we are, there's, we're going on a whole adventure now and I don't know where it is going to end up. So that's where I'm up to so far. I'm excited to continue. I am going to go read another chapter when I finish this vlog update. I don't really have much else to fill you in on. I've had a semi-productive day today but I did get a headache earlier and I took some painkillers and I forgot that because they're strong painkillers I normally only take one instead of like the recommended <laughs> dose of two just because they are a little bit stronger than other painkillers and I'm feeling a little bit woozy because of it. Like I'm not unwell or anything. It's, it's I'm all I'm gonna be fine. It's just um they're a little bit stronger than what I'm used to. So I'm feeling just a, a wee bit woozy and I've had like I'm not having I've I've had like a rough mental health week and like don't worry, nothing's like going on or anything. I'm fine. I'm just feeling a little bit down about stuff and a little bit kind of run down, but I'm alright, I'm alright, it's nothing 
major. I'm just not feeling like 100% myself. So I've been a little bit deep in my feels today, but I have been doing some stuff. I made some candles. I've been reading, obviously. I also started editing last week's vlog because it's going up a little bit earlier as this vlog will be taking its spot. So I think for the rest of the evening, I'm going to read a little bit more of this. If you can, can you see the thick black sections in here? That indicates the parts of the book. So I am somewhere in that middle section and I'm reading this over three days. So it's kind of perfect that it's split into three. So I do want to finish the middle section and I'll just have the last section left for tomorrow. I'm going to finish editing last week's vlog, pack up some candle orders, and then maybe hopefully I'll have time to play some video games because I have been playing Elder Scrolls online recently. I'm getting back into video games a little bit so I would like to find some more time to do that this evening but that is all I have for you I'm gonna go do some reading and finish editing last week's vlog but I will check in with you guys tomorrow and hopefully I will have finished this and I'll be able to give you my full thoughts Hey guys, so it's now, I think it's just gone 8pm on Sunday evening, it's 8.05, but I have hardly read any of ugh, The Merciful Crow today. I went out with a friend from uni today, he was on holiday in the area, so we met up for coffee and lunch. I had my first pumpkin spice of the season, which was very exciting. I tried to get one in Manchester a couple of weeks back, but I was um, in Manchester the day before pumpkin spice was released. So I couldn't get my pumpkin spice, but I finally got one today and it was great. I've had three coffees today, actually. Normally I have one, so um, that's a lot of caffeine. That's a lot of caffeine for me. I'm still enjoying this so far. I'll tell you what page I'm on. Can't find it. I'm on page 216. Still really enjoying it, but I have like 170 pages left, so I highly doubt I'm going to finish this tonight. I have the live show for Girls on the Verge, the Sobathon book, at 10pm. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to read for an hour and a half, see how much of this I can get read. And and the live show I think should only be an hour to 1.5 hours so hopefully it won't run too late and I may get to read a little bit more before I go to bed but obviously I will be in bed pretty early today because I have work tomorrow. So this is the first time I have not actually managed to read the Shelf Love Crate book in a weekend. I'm going to be running over a little bit into next week but hopefully I will be able to finish this tomorrow so that I can just pop in and wrap up my thoughts on this because I do plan on starting Dark Dawn tomorrow and I am very very excited and terrified for that but I'm thinking that finishing this shouldn't be too much of a problem because I am really enjoying it if I can just knuckle down and concentrate. So as I said I have a live show at 10pm and I want to do some reading so I'm I'm gonna go and do that and I will check in with you whenever I have finished this book which like I said will hopefully be either tonight it's unlikely but either tonight or tomorrow. Hey guys, it is Monday now, but as promised, I have just finished The Merciful Crow by Margaret Owen. I gave this four stars. I want to swap it to this side, sorry. As usual, I'm shuffling, but um, I gave it four stars. I did really enjoy this. I talked a lot about the characters the other day. All of that kind of still stands in with what I enjoy about the characters. There is quite a bit of diversity in here, and it is my favourite kind of diversity, where it's kind of just slipped in and it's no big deal. As somebody who isn't a fan of contemporaries, I don't read a lot of, for example, like coming out stories and you don't tend to find that in fantasy but what I do like about fantasies like this is that it's just slipped in we have people with all different kinds of sexual attraction and genders so you do get the diversity and the representation in there but it's not about that because obviously I like fantasy plot lines and not contemporary plot lines so some of the diversity in here, the majority of the characters are all POC. I think there are some lighter skinned characters, but the three main characters are various shades of darker skin tones. One of the main characters is also, I want to say bisexual, 
but possibly pansexual because there is a part of the book where they say that gender has never really mattered to them so we'll say we got some bi or pan rep there we also have a gay main character and then one of the side characters is gender non-conforming and uses they them pronouns so quite a bit of diversity in here which obviously wasn't something I was expecting going into this but I do like that things like that are becoming a lot more present in young well fantasy novels in general but young adult fantasy novels. I really like the plot of this as I was saying the other day we have like the fantasy language, the fantasy setting etc. If I would hazard a guess at the setting of this I would say that it is Eastern European but overall the setting is kind of just like basic fantasy setting. As for the romance I did really enjoy the romance in this. I really like the love interest and I like the whole relationship. Similarly to what I said about the beckoning shadow when I read that last month. Not for everyone. There are a couple of aspects about the romance that I didn't love. One is that it's very much slow burn for a lot of the book but then when it happens like when it actually becomes a romance then it's kind of insta lovey which made me roll my eyes a little bit but you guys know I'm trash for romance especially fantasy romance so I did enjoy that and the only reaction I kind of had was that I rolled my eyes a little bit but some of you guys who love romance a lot less than I do will probably not be as forgiving of that as I am. And then the only real negatives I have to say about this book at all like I did thoroughly love it and I'm so eager for the sequel but my only really negatives is something that I touched upon on Saturday and that is that the writing is a little bit clumsy in places where I have to keep jumping back to like the page before or characters will come to conclusions that I don't really understand and I feel like I have to backtrack several pages to kind of find out how they've drawn this conclusion and it makes a big show from the main character's perspective of the character like thinking and like the dot 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 so you know like when you think and then you pause because you're realizing something and then you pause. It does that as the characters like come to conclusions and I didn't really like that writing technique. There's also a little bit of repetition in here. There are many many times that the main character keeps saying the same thing. I'm not sure if it's foreshadowing but if it is it's really heavy-handed foreshadowing but multiple times throughout this book the main character says that with her bag of phoenix teeth she can burn the country of Sabah from mountain to coast if she wants to. Literally word for word that is all throughout the book many many times at least five times possibly more and as I said I don't know if it is foreshadowing for things that happen later in the series but if that is foreshadowing then that is really heavy-handed and otherwise I mean I don't know why it has to be repeated in exactly the same words every time if it's not foreshadowing so I didn't really like that too much and I also thought that there were some maybe not plot holes but sometimes the characters would find themselves in predicaments and based on what I know of the magic system I was kind of thinking like oh well couldn't you maybe do this or I mean you have this ability so couldn't you do this to fix this problem like why are you so clueless why are you falling into these traps but those are all the negatives that I have for it everything else I absolutely love the writing style tad repetitive and then I had those issues that I just mentioned but I really liked it it is a kind of particular writing style um it reminded me just a smidge of Nevernight but that is literally just a smidge and oh something else I and I got right till the end before I realised this. But the romance in here reminds me of Egret and Jon Snow. So Egret being the main character and then the love interest kind of being like a Jon Snow character. If you've read this, let me know if you also felt like that because I got some of those vibes towards the end uh, which was interesting. But overall this is a solid fantasy. I really enjoyed it. I would recommend it. I am thinking of doing because I've read quite a few debut, more debut books than I normally do. But I'm thinking of doing like a best debut books of 2019 video at the end of the year because for example this and The Beckoning Shadow won't make my best books of the year because I gave them four stars each. But I did very much enjoy them and I'm eagerly anticipating the sequels and I really want to highlight that on my channel. So I think that you will see providing I've read enough debuts by the end of the year you will see a best debut video at the end of the year and this will definitely be on it. Also can we just, I don't feel like I've given you guys time to appreciate the cover on this. The cover is absolutely stunning. I really enjoy it and there is absolutely no information about the sequel yet. It is called The Faithless Hawk which like the, t the title of that scares the shit out of me. I can't lie but we don't have a cover reveal yet and there is no synopsis so I have no idea where the sequel is going to go because this kind of wraps up in a way where there is definitely more story to be told and there's still plenty to be resolved but it does also kind of tie off 
nicely so that I'm not desperate like gonna go out of my mind waiting for the sequel but I really want to know what happens next. So that was The Merciful Crow by Margaret Owen which means I will be wrapping up this vlog. So once again a massive thank you to Shelf Love Crates for sponsoring not only this video but also the previous two videos in this series that I have done. All of their information and the links to their website, social media and also my discount code will be down in the description box if you would like to get your hands on a Shelf Love Crate. I would highly recommend them. I have had quite a range of items in their boxes so far and out of the three books that I've read from the Shelf Love Crate, two of them have been four stars and the first one I received was a three star. Wouldn't overall recommend the first book but the last two books I've got I really really enjoyed. So good selection of books, good selection of products, I would recommend the box. Please let me know if you have read The Merciful Crow. Madison if you are watching this feel free to gush in my DMs because I loved it as much as you do even though I've seen a lot of people DNF in this and not enjoying it. I really loved it and Madison really loves it. You should also subscribe to Madison if you hadn't recently um, because we have, we both have good taste in books. So that's about it for my weekend and a bit reading vlog and I will catch you in my next reading vlog which I'm going to start directly after this. There's going to be a lot of um, interesting announcements in that video I think so you guys may want to check that out but I will catch you next week guys. Bye! Oh you bite your friend like chocolate You say you're a go when nobody knows With guns in under our petticoats We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no